Good evening, everyone. I'm Laura Ingram. This is the Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. I have to say, happy anniversary to the Ingram Angle. We launched our show seven years ago tonight, and you, the viewers, and our entire Fox family made the show's success possible. So I want to thank you all very much, as always, for watching. First, he was a businessman. Then he was president, right? Then, well, fry guy at McDonald's. And now it looks like Trump picked up another job, garbage man. You like my garbage truck. This truck is in honor of Kamala and Joe Biden. I think that the comment made by really both of them, because there are really two of them, uh, about being garbage, maybe 250 million people, uh, they shouldn't be talking. That's like deplorable for Hillary. This is the deplorable for Hillary. And uh, I think this is worse, actually. For Joe Biden to make that statement, it's really a disgrace. Okay, that was brilliant. The McDonald's stop was brilliant. And, you know, we always say make America great again. I think make campaigns fun again. Okay, we all need to laugh. We all need to have a little fun. But that really does illustrate the everyman approach that Trump has been trying to take as this campaign has moved on. And also taking their insults and their vitriol and kind of turning it uh, against them. And then in some cases, just having a little fun. Brilliant move. Whoever came up with that gold star. And that brings us to love and hate. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, in a warped way, Joe Biden's remarks last night about Trump and his voters were refreshing, only because he spoke the quiet part out loud. The other day, a speaker at his rally called Puerto Rico a floating island of garbage. Well, let me tell you something. I don't, I, I don't know the Puerto Rican that, that I know, or Puerto Rico where I'm in my home state of Delaware. They're good, decent, honorable people. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. His, his, his demonization of Cena is unconscionable, and it's un-American. It's totally contrary to everything we've done. Now, of course, the White House and all their media pals tried to clean up Joe's remarks, but we all know he meant them. And remember, he's the same fellow who called the country systemically racist in the summer of 2020. Talk about hateful. Joe Biden's comments were the direct result of Kamala's and Tim Waltz to portray everyone who isn't voting for them as evil or subhuman. We know it's what they believe because look how they've treated you. They've treated you like garbage, frankly. They've treated you like garbage. You know what? The truth is they've treated our whole country like garbage, whether they meant to or not, because they're grossly incompetent people and they've destroyed our country. Now, not only did Biden steal Kamala's thunder last night, he undercut the theme of her so-called closing pitch, which was unity and cooperation. Unlike Donald Trump, I don't believe people who disagree with me are the enemy. He wants to put them in jail. I'll give them a seat at the table. For too long, we have been consumed with too much division, chaos, and mutual distrust. And it can be easy then to forget a simple truth. It doesn't have to be this way. Well, you bet. And after Tuesday, we hope it won't be this way. Of course, there is a good reason, though, right, for Americans to distrust Washington, D.C. And, of course, the mess that Kamala helped create. She opened our border. She flooded our country with illegals, which I think is treasonous. She drove up inflation with insane spending and, of course, destroyed our energy independence to drive up gas prices. Now, you think that might have caused some of the chaos that American families are feeling with their budgets? How about for young people trying to buy a house? For young women raped or threatened by migrants? So if they don't hate America, then why did they punish Americans with these policies? Why did Kamala and Joe fling open the border, which they knew would cause pain, suffering, and yes, even death to American citizens. Why? A few days ago, a retired Green Bay police officer was allegedly killed by an illegal in a hit and run. And yesterday in Louisiana, 17-year-old Luis Renan Bonilla Alfaro, 
here illegally, was arrested after he admitted to molesting two boys, ages four and seven, and filming the heinous acts. Police believe there are more victims. So Kamala says she loves America. But how do you love a country if you enacted policies that allowed this to happen in the United States? How does she love America when she refuses to change her policies? Remember, I wouldn't change anything. Now, no matter how much the White House and the media tried to spin Joe's garbage remarks, we all know, again, he meant them and that Kamala and her most radical supporters agree with them. That's why, beyond being stepped on by Joe, her speech last night was so ineffective. It was also just bizarre because it was internally inconsistent and ultimately hateful. Denigrating Trump with debunked smears and despicable lies. Donald Trump intends to use the United States military against American citizens who simply disagree with him. He has an enemies list of people he intends to prosecute. Nearly 250 years ago, America was born when we wrested freedom from a petty tyrant. They didn't do that, only to see us submit to the will of another petty tyrant. We are not a vessel for the schemes of wannabe dictators. Very, very unifying and uplifting. Once again, Trump's a fascist. How original. It's so boring. And of course, she believes that Americans supporting him, of course, they have to be fascist too, or just they're really stupid. Whatever it is, it's hateful. But none of this, as Trump alluded to, should surprise us because these insults come on a long line of others. Hillary's deplorables line, Michelle's first time I'm proud to be an American line, and Obama's bitter clingers description of conservatives. And of course, America's intrinsically racist, which I mentioned earlier, which they've all proclaimed. Now, although at times they've hidden it, they've always, always harbored a hatred of our history, a hatred of our constitutional framework, of our current court, of serious Christians, of conservative media, or anyone who thinks for themselves. Certainly they hate this show, probably most of you. And their hatred stands in stark contrast to the movement Trump started. It's one that's overwhelmingly bound by a love of country and a love of each other. This the left does not understand, just like they don't understand why Trump remains himself so popular. Think about it. After they tried to jail him on political charges, after they tried to bankrupt him with lawsuits, impeach him twice, few Democrats, really no Democrats, predicted that Trump would not only endure all of these attacks, but expand his coalition and then emerge out of it more popular than ever. So what explains this? Love. More Americans than ever understand that only a man driven by a deep love of country would stay in this fight. Others would have left it a long time ago. And not just stay in the fight, but yell, fight, 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 minutes after a would-be assassin tried to kill him. Who wouldn't admire this? Who doesn't want to return to the country we had in 2019? I want to live in a country where we feel safe again, and that's what Donald Trump. As a father of a 13-year-old daughter, I want nothing but the best for her. With Trump, we know that the market does good, crime is down, the country's in a good place. We love our country. We want to see the same policies back in place when Trump left office. Mm. You know, low inflation, tax cuts, um, secure border. Yeah, they all remember the way it was. So when Kamala says we're not going back, well, those people want to go back to peace and prosperity. We all do. And Trump's defiance and his determination, let's face it, they're not exactly the qualities usually associated with American politicians. And Democrats, they just hate that he's exposed them and that he calls out their cynical ways which he's doing effectively down the home stretch. Kamala has been comparing her political opponents to the most evil mass murderers in history. And now speaking on a call for her campaign last night, Joe Biden finally said what he and Kamala really think of our supporters 
He called them garbage. And they mean it. My response to Joe and Kamala is very simple. You can't lead America if you don't love Americans. You just go. And you can't be president if you hate the American people. 100% correct. You can only rule over a country you hate. You can't lead it with love if you've done what you've done to it, knowing what was going to happen, and they knew. Now, this is why Biden and Harris never change course, despite what they're doing to the country's economy, what they did with immigration, the border. They didn't care who they hurt as a result. Our people, they were just collateral damage in the Democrats' quest to punish and remake America. So contrast Kamala's dark message and lousy record with Trump's message today. I'm here today with a message of hope for all Americans. I will end inflation. I will stop the massive invasion of criminals into our country. And I will bring back a thing called the American dream. Our country will be bigger, better, bolder, richer, safer, and stronger than ever before. And that's what this election is all about. Ultimately, it's a contest between millions of Americans who love this country and are determined to fix it, and a miserable collection of elites who despise the average American. So it's time to put patriots in charge of the federal government and get a government that loves this country as much as you and I do. And that's the angle. Last night was the biggest speech of Kamala's career. The script was ready, the stage was set, Joe Biden was locked inside of the White House. Everything was going according to plan until someone gave Biden a laptop. And we know Bidens and laptops don't mix. Somehow Joe logged himself onto Zoom and said this. Just the other day, a speaker at his rally called Puerto Rico a floating island of garbage. Well, let me tell you something. I don't, I, I don't know the Puerto Rican that, that I know or Puerto Rico where I'm in my home state of Delaware. They're good, decent, honorable people. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. Biden, who doesn't even know what Zoom is, just derailed Kamala's campaign. And he did it from solitary confinement a week before Election Day. <laughs> Donald Trump couldn't believe it. He found out during a rally. Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but I have breaking news for you, Mr. President. You may not have heard this. Just moments ago, Joe Biden stated that our supporters are garbage. That's terrible. That's what it says. That's what it says. Remember Hillary? She said deplorable. And then she said irredeemable, right? But she said deplorable. That didn't work out. Garbage, I think, is worse, right? But he doesn't know. You have to please forgive him. Please forgive him. For he not knoweth what he said. And then as soon as Kamala got off the stage, her phone rang. He's spoken to him about his comments and, and his comments. Uh, he did call me last night, but this didn't come up. Hey, Kamala, great speech tonight. It was perfect. Now I got the Yankees game on. Whatever you do, don't watch the news tonight. Got to go. Bye. But then some intern broke the news to Kamala. Uh, Madam Vice President, Biden just kind of called half the country garbage. So she turned on TV and saw this. What's your response to that comment from, from President Biden, where it sounds like he's calling Trump supporters their garbage? Yeah, look, I had not heard that until now, Caitlin. So I'm kind of giving you my fresh reaction to it. I would never um, insult the good people of Pennsylvania or, or, or any Americans, even if they chose to support a candidate uh, that I didn't support. Democrats were all looking around wondering, who put Biden on a Zoom? He's not even allowed the campaign, especially past his bedtime. Soon, everybody pointed their fingers at Binder. And she had to confess. Yeah, she logged him on. Now, if Kamala ekes this thing out, Binder's going to be looking for work. <laughs> it was bad enough that Biden said we have to lock up Trump. Now he's calling Trump voters garbage. At this point, we may never see Biden again. The Washington Post is saying he needs to go on a vacation for a week. 
but he's been on vacation for four years, so what's the difference? The White House spent all day trying to clean it up. Um, can you just address the president's comments yesterday um, referring to uh, Trump supporter as garbage? Does he think less of Americans who support Trump than he does of those who do not? Yeah. And two, why is he using that kind of rhetoric? How is that presidential? So, so a couple of things, a couple of things. So just to clarify, he was not calling Trump supporters garbage. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. Which is why he put out, this is why he wanted to make sure that we put out uh, a statement that clarified what he meant and what he was trying to say. And so just want to make that very clear for folks who are watching. <laughs> the Biden cover-up continues, and he's not even running. The White House got caught altering the transcripts of these comments. So pathetic. Now, if I were Kamala, I'd be like, you know what? I heard what the president said, and he's dead wrong. And as a matter of fact, he's been brain dead the whole time. But she couldn't do it, even after this. She still wouldn't do anything differently than Joe Biden. What did you think when you heard President Biden make those comments? Well, first of all, I think that the president has explained what he meant. But um, I've, I've said it earlier, I, I strongly disagree with any criticism of people based on who they vote for. Kamala is the type of gal that orders a steak, medium rare, and it comes out well done, but she's too afraid to tell the waiter to send it back because she doesn't want to ruffle his feathers. So she eats a $75 piece of charcoal and tells the table, I, I actually like it this way. Oh, then Walls got pounded this morning. Watch. I want to put it into a larger context of your recent comment comparing the Sunday Trump rally to a Nazi rally. And I would also throw in there Obama's bitter clingers, guns and religion comment from a while back, the deplorable line from Hillary Clinton's campaign, and the way that Democrats are seen by some voters as disrespecting them. And I have to ask, does that undercut this closing message of unity from your campaign? No, certainly not. Eh, certainly not. The Harris campaign told CNN, eh, we're not going to lose a single voter because of this. That's what Hillary said about deplorables. This did not sit well with the people of Pennsylvania. Listen. We had Obama say we clung to our guns and religion. Hillary called us deplorables. And now Biden calls us trash. So it's, that's what the left really thinks of us. And I think it's disgusting. It feels very demeaning, you know. Um, I've been a Republican my whole life. And it's a privilege to be a Republican and a conservative. And I stand for conservative values. And I think I can process thoughts and have my own thought pattern and to be called garbage for those thoughts is not necessarily an uplifting comment. We're just normal Americans that are trying to make um, a difference in the people around us in business. I'm a businesswoman. And to be called trash is just, it's, it's degrading. Um, it's, I mean, that's really what they think of us is, is we're like deplorables and, and trash. Donald Trump not letting it slide. How do you like my garbage truck? This truck is in honor of Kamala and Joe Biden. I just wanted to let you know that 250 million people, that's what I think the real number is for making America great again. 250 million, the real number. They don't think in terms of garbage, okay? They don't use terms like that. And it's a shame. And Joe Biden should be ashamed of himself if he knows what he's even doing. And she should be ashamed because she shouldn't let him do it. She's the vice president, but I assume she's acting as the president. She should never have let that happen. I hope you enjoy this garbage truck. Thank you very much. <laughs> Trump's peeking out of a window of a garbage truck just a week after he peeked out of a McDonald's drive through window. First the apron, now the vest. You can't unsee it. He's capitalizing faster than fast food. You're looking at a political athlete. This is less than 24 hours. Now, Kamala spent millions of dollars producing that speech last night at the Ellipse, and no one remembers it. No one's talking about it. Trump's in a garbage vest. That's all she wrote. I have to begin by saying 250 million Americans are not garbage. <laughs> this week, Kamala has been comparing her political opponents to the most evil mass murderers in history. Crooked Joe Biden finally said what he and Kamala really think of our supporters. He called them garbage. No way.
My response to Joe and Kamala is very simple. You can't lead America if you don't love Americans. That's true. You can't be president if you hate the American people, which I believe they do. Now, he should campaign until Tuesday in the garbage vest. And you're not the garbage. Trump's taking out the garbage. Vivek said that. Now, they've already called us deplorable, bitter clingers, racists, Neanderthals, Nazis. And now they're trying to pretend like garbage. Oh, we didn't mean that. Come on, everybody knows they meant it because all they do is put you down. They think working people who go to church and didn't go to college are too ignorant to appreciate Bidenomics and the transformational impact of the Green New Deal. They don't think you're smart enough to realize how good your lives are under Joe and Kamala, how our economy needs migrants, and how our poor prisoners need their sex change operations. You're used to it, and it makes you even more motivated to vote. But we're also having fun with it. People are getting their costumes ready early. Halloween's gonna look like garbage day. Kamala's never gonna be me in November. Donna's gonna make the country better than you can remember. Kamala's never gonna be me in November. Hey, Margarita! That Trump in a garbage truck and MAGA trick-or-treaters in trash bags, that's free. Trump didn't have to bow down and beg donors to give him money to buy ads on TV like Kamala. This is everywhere in an instant, like that. The next six days are going to look like a garbage route. House to house, state to state. By Tuesday, the whole country's going to hear about it. Late deciders always swing one way in the last week. And these swing votes are going to break late for Trump. The American people have put up with way too much already to add insult to injury. And the Democrats aren't just calling Republicans garbage. The Democrats are calling black men sexist, young voters dumb, white dudes racist. Joe Biden's just a bitter clinger who resents the coup and is subconsciously sabotaging his understudy. And Kamala doesn't have the courage to smack him down because she's just a machine politician who only knows how to get ahead by saluting the boss. Plus, she knows better than anybody. No one Fs with a Biden. And Joe has a lot of nerve calling anybody garbage while his low-class son behaves like a disgrace and gets away with it. Joe and Kamala are running a campaign based on hate because they can't run on their record. And you deserve better. Tonight, the party of unity, the party of joy and happiness and love and peace is at it again. According to the president of the United States, Joe Biden, half the country is, quote, garbage. Take a look. Well, let me tell you something. I don't, I, I don't know the Puerto Rican that, that I know, or Puerto Rico, where I'm in my home state of Delaware. They're good, decent, honorable people. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. Oh, of course you support Donald Trump. According to the Democratic Party, mil billions of Americans just like you and me, we are a basket of irredeemable deplorables. We are racist, sexist, fascist-loving Nazis who cling to our God, our guns, our Bibles, our religion. And now apparently the top Democrat in the White House thinks that we're also garbage. But as the saying goes, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And today in Wisconsin, take a look at that. This may go down as an iconic, epic moment that uh, we will remember for a long time. Donald Trump hitching a very special ride on a garbage truck decked out in American flags, MAGA gear. You can tell a lot about the state of a campaign by optics. As the Democrats ratchet up the hatred, the name calling, the vitriol, Donald Trump, He's working at McDonald's. He's telling jokes at the Al Smith dinner. He is comforting people in North Carolina when it matters and working with Elon Musk to get them communications. Generally, in this case, tonight, having a great time. Take a look. I think the Democrats have done a very poor job. We're leading in every, in every state. Uh, we're leading big. And I think that the comment made by really both of them, because there are really two of them, uh, about being garbage, maybe 250 million people, uh, they shouldn't be talking. That's like deplorable for Hillary. This is the deplorable for Hillary. And uh, I think this is worse, actually. For Joe Biden to make that statement, it's really a disgrace. And I have to begin by saying 250 million Americans are not garbage.
My response to Joe and Kamala is very simple. You can't lead America if you don't love Americans. The problem with the Democratic Party, they are now the party of coastal elites. They are the party that caters to Hollywood, D.C., and New York society. Donald Trump knows that without hardworking Americans, the people that really do make this country great, the people that collect our trash, pave our roads, drill for oil, do the fracking, grow our crops, uh, deliver food to stores and trucks, make our food, build our infrastructure, America would, would come to a grinding halt. You're not going to see Kamala on the back of a, a garbage truck. Now, she prefers the manicured grounds uh, of the Washington Ellipse, where last night, surrounded by her elitist D.C. friends, she viciously trashed Donald Trump and then, almost in the same breath, started talking about unity. This lack of self-awareness in the Democratic Party is almost unbelievable. Take a look. For too long, we have been consumed with too much division, chaos, and mutual distrust. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. We have to stop pointing fingers and start locking arms. Donald Trump's got this big uh, rally going at Madison Square Garden. There's a direct parallel to a big rally that happened in the mid-1930s at Madison Square Garden. And, and don't think that he doesn't know for one second exactly what they're doing there. I will work every day to build consensus and reach compromise. I know this sounds bizarre. It sounds like if I said this five years ago, you'd lock me up. We gotta lock him up. It is time to turn the page on the drama and the conflict, the fear and division. Let me ask you tonight, do you think Donald Trump is a fascist? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. My humble advice to Democrats, well, you might have a hard time unifying the country while campaigning and comparing your political opponents to Nazis and fascists and racists and referring to half the country as garbage. It is past time for Democrats to pick a lane. You want to bring the country together or do you want to call the people in this country that you disagree with evil because you can't have it both ways. You can't do both. Naturally, the state-run media mob, they are trying their level best to help put a positive spin on all of the lying, the smearing, the hypocrisy. And today, the Washington Post pushed, you know, the White House propaganda with claims that Biden's garbage comments were little more than a punctuation error. Meanwhile, NPR accusing Republicans of pouncing on Biden's rhetoric and someone on fake news CNN blaming Biden's stutter. The excuses have been coming in hot. They've been coming in fast. As always, we let you decide. Just to clarify, he was not calling Trump supporters garbage, which is why he put out, this is why he wanted to make sure that we put out uh, a statement that clarified what he meant and what he was trying to say. So I don't understand why you clutching your pearls, because you're trying to make something out of a, a, a tongue slip. As someone who had a stutter growing up, it's very obvious to me that there's an apostrophe at the end of supporters there. He was referring to the garbage spewed by supporters, not simply the supporters themselves. I don't understand why he's walking that back, because, I mean, based off the examples he gave, like, if, if, you, if, you, if you are a person who supports those examples that he gave, you are garbage. Now, meanwhile, when asked about Biden's rhetoric, Kamala Harris just couldn't find the courage to condemn her boss, and instead, she served up another meaningless word salad, as per usual. Take a look. Have you talked to President Biden since his comment last night about garbage? Uh, listen, I think that, first of all, he clarified his comments, but let me be clear, I strongly disagree with any criticism of people based on who they vote for. She's just talking in circles, just like she wouldn't condemn her own vice president, who compared the MSG rally to a Nazi rally, just like she calls Donald Trump a fascist. And keep in mind the environment after two would-be assassins and Iranian assassination teams in this country. You would think they might want to ratchet down the rhetoric and be responsible, but no, they're irresponsible. Now, she and her surrogates, they're spending the last stretch of this campaign with smears and slander and lies and propaganda and misinformation information every single day, not only of Donald Trump, but everyone that supports Donald Trump. 
They are claiming that you are Nazis, fascist supporters. For example, her running mate, Weird Tim Walls, is still unapologetic comparing Americans to Nazis, because that's what he was claiming. Take a look. You were comparing that rally to a Nazi rally? Look, I'm comparing it to the hate that came out of this, and I think they confirmed that. You stand by the comparison, though, to a Nazi rally? Look, look the rally, you saw it for yourself. I'll let the American public make the decision of what they saw. What about you, so, though? So I know what I saw, and I'll just leave it at that. How is she going to find common ground with people who supported Donald Trump, someone she calls a wannabe dictator and a petty tyrant? Well, good morning, George. Yeah, the, the vice president's rhetoric is the rhetoric that, that a president of the United States gives, one that understands we're all in this together. I want to get your reaction to the president's comments, but I, I want to put it into a larger context of your recent comment comparing the Sunday Trump rally to a Nazi rally. And I would also throw in there Obama's bitter clingers, guns and religion comment from a while back, the deplorable line from Hillary Clinton's campaign and the way that Democrats are seen by some voters as disrespecting them. And I have to ask, does that undercut this closing message of unity from your campaign? No, certainly not. No, sir, not at all. Are you kidding? Come on. Once again, just weeks after two different people tried to assassinate Donald Trump, killing one of his supporters, Kamala just doesn't have the courage to simply do the right thing, lower the temperature. Take a look. I talked with Governor Walls yesterday. Okay. He compared uh, Trump's rally on Sunday to that of one of the Nazi rallies in the 30s at Madison Square Garden. Do you compare that? Do you find that a similar comparison? Listen, this election is in seven days, and I think the American people have a very clear choice. And on the one hand, you have Donald Trump, who is constantly fanning the flames of division and hate, who is trying to have the American people point their fingers at each other, or my leadership, which is founded on a lived and experience that the vast majority of us have more in common than what separate us. Calling candidates and their supporters, uh, inferring that they're Nazis, that they're fascists, that they're racist, that they're garbage, um, is that hateful? The messaging from the Harris campaign doesn't make any sense, and it's not just the weird fake promises to unite the country, from the border to the Second Amendment, to the economy, to taxes, to fracking, to oil, to the wars overseas. Kamala Harris and weird Tim Walls have been all over the map. The only way to truly know how Kamala would govern is to look at the last four years. Ask yourself before you vote. Are you better off than you were four years ago? Did they good, do a good job securing the border? Are your towns and cities more safe and secure? How do you feel when you go to the grocery store and you're paying inflated prices on everything you buy, every item in every store? How do you feel about gassing up your car and paying a dollar, dollar fifty more a gallon? How do you feel about war in Europe? How do you feel about war in the Middle East? How do you feel about the withdrawal from Afghanistan? Now, between now and Election Day, you have to answer those questions and then head to the polls. And in six days, one week from today, all those polls will close and we will start the vote counting. And we will soon have a new president elect. All right. Happy Wednesday, everyone. I love to hear that. Welcome to a special edition of Gutfeld. I am Tom Shalou. Greg is out buying shoulder pads for his Randy Weingarten costume. <laughs> So, so, in a virtual campaign call, Joe Biden referred to Trump supporters as garbage. Yeah. Shocking everyone who couldn't believe Joe successfully logged on to Zoom. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger has endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris. Which comes as no surprise, since he and Doug Emhoff share a love of impregnating the health. <laughs> a lot of love, a lot of love. At the World Series last night, two Yankees fans tried to pry a foul ball out of the glove of Dodgers right fielder Mookie Betts. I gotta be honest, it's nice to see New York fans try to steal something besides a wallet. <laughs> Not only were the two ejected from the game, they were sentenced to attend three Mets games. <laughs> All right. It really worked. They made the Wow, playoffs. they're from Queens. I didn't know it. Yeah. The Menendez brothers are reportedly begging to be released before Thanksgiving. 
Probably because all the wine and the turkey will tire the family out, making them easier to murder. <laughs> Kamala says she hasn't done any of the things she's promising to do as president because right now she's only the vice president. She is, asked one man. <laughs> you didn't know. After... <laughs> After three years as a couple, Channing Tatum and Zoe Kravitz have broken off their engagement. Yeah. Their reps say the split is amicable and that they both just want to spend more time with their mirrors. <laughs> South Korea is spending over $300 million to combat the country's loneliness epidemic, and they're starting by bringing in an expert. <laughs> Looked like he almost looked ready for that one. Joe Rogan offered to interview Kamala Harris, but her team's demands were unacceptable. Namely, that he travel to meet her, he limit the podcast to under an hour, and he stop being Joe Rogan. <laughs> okay, let's do a monologue, shall we? Okay. So remember back a few months ago when the Kamala Harris campaign was all about joy? The joy and the excitement that we're seeing around this campaign. The joy of her laughter and her lights. We're fighting for joy. Somebody say joy. Joy, joy, joy. With faith in each other and joy in our hearts. With energy, with passion, and with joy. We need Kamala Harris, the president of joy. And let us choose joy. Wow, what a difference a few weeks makes, huh? <laughs> because now Kamala is sounding about as joyful as an episode of Naked and Afraid featuring Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> Roll it, Mike! We are not a vessel for the schemes of wannabe dictators. This is someone who is unstable, obsessed with revenge, consumed with grievance and out for unchecked power. I am here tonight to say that is not who we are. That is not who we are. Yes, these days the only joy Kamala is inspiring is amongst Team Trump. And it's not because she's covering his shift at McDonald's. <laughs> this is what it looks like when a pantsuit comes apart at the seams. From the outset, Kamala was teed up as the DEI candidate, black, Asian, female, and disabled by chronic giggling. <laughs> she did bring us together because nobody has ever managed to turn off such a diverse mix of voters. It's no secret, men are not buying what she's selling, even black men. She's about as popular in a black barbershop as my barbershop quartet. <laughs> what? Right, guys, right? Yes, sirree, yes, sirree, yes, sirree, yes, sirree. Yes, sirree. She even, she even brought in Barack Obama to scold black men at an event in Pittsburgh where he noted that Kamala's weakness with male voters was most pronounced with the brothers, or brothers, as they say in Cape Cod. Part of it makes me think, and I'm speaking to men directly now, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. Mm -hmm. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for that. Hmm, what could these other reasons be that he's talking about? Maybe the record employment increases for blacks under Trump? Maybe the fact that Kamala locked up all those black men on low-level weed charges as a California prosecutor? Or could it be that black men don't like salad? Roll tape. <laughs> Well, I think culture is, it, it is a reflection of our moment and our time, right? And, and, and present culture is the way we express how we're feeling about the moment. The significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time. Can I get a side of ranch with that? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's almost as if blacks, Asians, and Hispanics all care more about making their lives better than being reduced to a demographic category by woke pollsters. Another reason that the left is short on joy these days is Kamala simply can't be clear about what she would do as president. I think what some voters are struggling with, and we've heard this across the state, is when you discuss your plans, they come back and ask, well, why haven't you done it already? Well, I'm not president. <laughs> You're vice president. I, yeah, exactly, respect. but I'm going to tell you what I'm doing as president when I have the ability then to do what I know, based on my experience, is a new approach it is about building on the good work that has happened, but there's more to do. I think I speak for millions of Americans when I say, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but I guess her answer is sort of the presidential version of, we have to pass the bill in order to see what's in it. And she also repeated her favorite phrase. We have auto workers who are being laid off and those who fear that they might be laid off. The average person can't afford groceries or their rent. And recent polls in Michigan show that Michigan voters believe that Donald Trump would do a better job with handling the economy and bringing jobs back. What do you say to that? Well, let's start with this. I come from the middle class. <laughs> wow. Wow. That answer fit the question about as well as one of Tyrus's jackets on Greg. <laughs> And here she is last night roasting some more of her favorite chestnuts. 250 years ago, America was born when we wrested freedom from a petty tyrant. They didn't do that, only to see us submit to the will of another petty tyrant. Wait, yesterday Trump was Hitler, now he's King George? <laughs> you got to get your evil dictator straight. And she ends by throwing consistency to the wind and calling for unity. And here is my pledge to you. I pledge to seek common ground and common sense solutions to make your life better. I don't believe people who disagree with me are the enemy. He wants to put them in jail. I'll give them a seat at the table. Wait, I thought they were fascists. You're going to give fascists a seat at the table? <laughs> I think you'd do better to go full-on hysterical like Nicole Wallace. Listen to her discuss the stakes of the election while fawning over Michelle Obama. Former First Lady Michelle Obama isn't messing around anymore because with women's reproductive health care and freedoms hanging in the balance next Tuesday, the stakes literally are life and death for every woman in America. It's not hyperbole. It's not an exaggeration. It's what happens next week. Yeah, that's not hyperbole. Trump will murder all women. <laughs> <laughs> so the joy appears to have been replaced with panic. Because the truth is, Dems made a major error. Not in choosing Kamala, but choosing her too soon. They should have shivved Biden much later. <laughs> say, about a week before the election. Because the longer the nation gets exposed to her, the clearer it is that there's just nothing there except an empty pants suit. And as many Dems, traditional voters, back away from her, Donald Trump rises in the polls, and all I can say is I'm starting to feel pretty joyful myself. Huh? <laughs> Let me ask, what time is it, guys? Time to have some fun. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.